guys, in this video I'm going to talk you through a distance time graph exam question. So here's our distance time graph, okay? It's different to a speed time graph. We have the distance along this axis instead of speed, okay? And then time along the bottom. For the first part of the question, it says, how far did Gianna travel to work? So let's just have a look at this distance time graph. We can see she left home at seven in the morning, okay? And then you can see the distance from home is increasing, okay? Then there's a horizontal line. That just means that she stopped moving, okay? Whenever you see a horizontal line on a distance time graph, it means the person is stationary, okay? They've stopped. Then she's traveling on her way to work again, okay? You can see the distance is increasing from her home. And then, same again, the distance is still increasing, but at a slower rate. Can you see the gradient of this line is smaller than this one? Okay, so when you see a steep gradient, it means she's traveling faster, and then she's traveling slower, and then here she arrives at her workplace, okay, at nine o'clock. So how far did Gianna travel to work? Well, we can see work is labeled on the graph and it's labeled halfway between the number 15 and the number 20. Okay, so this means 15 kilometers from home and 20 kilometers from home. So halfway between these two numbers is just 17.5. If you're not sure how to work that out, you would just add 15 and 20 together and divide by two. And when you do that, you get 17.5 kilometers. Okay, so that's how far she travels to work. Next, it says, explain what happened at 10 past seven in the morning. So you need to find out where that time is on the graph. This is seven o'clock and this is half past seven, which means 7.10 is here, 7.20 is here. In fact, each little line is 10 minutes, okay, greater than the previous time. So at 7.10, we can see this is where she's stationary. Do you remember I said earlier, whenever you see a horizontal line on a distance time graph, it means the person has stopped. So you just need to write that Gianna has stopped, um, or Gianna stopped moving, or Gianna is stationary, something along those lines, and that will get you the marks, okay? For part three, the last part, it says, calculate the average speed for Gianna's journey to work. So I teach my students this triangle connecting speed, distance and time. Distance being at the top and speed and time underneath. That way you can cover the letter that you're trying to find. So in this case speed and it tells you how you would calculate speed. So we need to divide distance by time. If you're working out distance, it's speed times time. And if you're working out time, it would be distance divided by speed. So it's quite a useful triangle to remember. I always say that D goes at the top because D is first in the alphabet before S and T. So to work out speed, we have to divide the distance by the time. Okay, so distance we worked out in part one. Okay, the distance that she traveled to work was 17.5 kilometers. Okay, so that's the numerator of our fraction. And the time, it has to be in hours, okay? Because in this question, it asks for the speed in kilometers per hour. This is already in kilometers, so we just need to make sure we write our time in terms of hours, okay? It's quite a simple one because she leaves at seven in the morning and she arrives at nine in the morning, so it takes her two hours. So you just need to divide by two. So when you calculate that, you get 8.75, and remember the units are kilometers an hour, although they're given to you in the question. So that was her average speed. second exam question we have a distance time graph for the journey of a bicycle now just before we have a look at the questions I just want to show you this graph I've indicated just the most important points on the whiteboard because I don't have squares on my board it's quite difficult for me to draw an accurate diagram here okay so the bicycle travels 
section A and then it stops at 15.10. So after 15 minutes and 10 kilometers, the bicycle changes speed during section B. Then at C, remember it's horizontal, so that means the bicycle is stationary. And then at 45 minutes, the bicycle continues on its journey, okay? So for part A, we have to write down the part of the journey with the fastest speed. Earlier I mentioned the fastest speed is represented by the steepest line. So this is a, a flatter line, this is a steep line. Hopefully you can just see from looking at the graph that section A has the steepest line. So that is where the bicycle is travelling the fastest. Okay, so all you need to do from part A is write down capital A, okay, because that represents this part of the journey. If you're not sure from just looking at the graph which line is the steepest, what you need to do is calculate the gradient of the line. So when you calculate the gradients of the lines, you should take the one with the biggest number, okay, because that means the fastest speed. If you're not sure how to work out gradients, go and have a look at my other lesson where I use a method called rise over run to calculate, to calculate gradients, okay. So for part B, it says, after the first 65 minutes, the bicycle travels at a constant speed of 20 kilometers an hour for 15 minutes. Draw this part of the journey. So we have to complete the distance time graph ourselves, okay? So speed is 20 kilometers an hour, and we also know the time is 15 minutes. So what you need to do is work out the distance. Now remember that triangle I used earlier, connecting distance, speed and time? To work out the distance, you need to multiply the speed by the time, okay? So if we do that, the speed is 20. Now we have to be careful with the time because the units for speed are kilometers per hour and here the time is in minutes. Whenever you want to change minutes into hours, you must divide by 60. So when you write the number 15, you need to give it a denominator of 60, okay? That means you're dividing this by 60 and you're turning the minutes into hours. So when you calculate this, it gives you 5 and the distance is in kilometres because this was in kilometres per hour. So we know that the bicycle travels 5 kilometres in 15 minutes. So. Here is time in minutes, so we need to make sure we go along 15 minutes. So this point is at 65 minutes. So 65 plus 15 is 80, okay, so that takes us to about here. And then we need to add on 5 kilometres. So at the moment we're in line with 23 kilometres. So 23 plus 5 is 28, so you'll go up to 28. So that point that you need to mark there is... 80 along the x-axis, 28 along the y-axis, and then you just take your ruler and a pencil and join up those points. And that's it, okay? We've done part B.